Got it. Mm -hmm. Going back to the shooting itself, and, and you know, we've been talking a little bit about how this is happening across the country. I was interested in just knowing about the frequency, and I found this article um, that was talking about this Harvard study that they did about mm -hmm. the frequency of mass shootings, and how it went from you know the 80s to the 90s into the early 2000s. I believe it was uh, every 200 days. It seemed like there might have been a, a mass shooting. Now, 63 every 63 days in the last 10 years. Days. I mean, think about it with us as journalists. We can recite yeah. some recent shootings, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. The think, Capitol Gazette. So, so our fellow journalists came under fire, you know? Mm -hmm. Our fellow journalists were killed while they Parkland. were doing their job. Parkland, Florida. You mentioned South Carolina. The, mm -hmm. the baseball game, the congressional baseball game. I lived, you know, a mile from where that happened and I could hear the sirens that morning. So when I hear these folks talk about, oh my goodness, I'm wondering what's going on. I'm seeing these cars. That's what happened that morning because I said the same thing. I'm like, what is happening? And there was the shooting there at the, at the baseball diamond in mm -hmm. Alexandria up in Northern Virginia. I mean, this is just... Anywhere, yeah, anytime. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Anywhere, anywhere, anytime. When you think you're safe, it's like, no. No, just like with people in Parkland, we're in a nice neighborhood, this is a good, you know, you just... You just never know. It is very scary that you think that you could just go to work and you think you're secure. Or school, yeah. or church. Exactly. You the know, places the places where, think. where you think you are mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. secure mm -hmm. uh, is where these things are happening. And that's why, you know, I think that's why you, you see so many people trying to come together mm. and, um, you know, offer a shoulder to lean on. And it's also why you see so many people just so confused and hurt mm -hmm. and torn up by it, you know, yeah. because it's the places where these things just aren't supposed to happen. They aren't supposed to happen anywhere, but, you know, where, they're, where you think they most aren't supposed to happen. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the police headquarters like a block away from that building? Oh, I yeah. think if it's the yeah, yeah. municipal center, that would be most of the government, uh, mm -hmm. the governmental offices, yeah. yeah. I mean, thank goodness people were there as quickly as they got there, right? You see yeah. the response. Bruce Nadelka the there, long mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. for the EMS. Yeah, it's just. Mm. Well, we were just looking at the live picture of where the news conference is going to be held. It was still empty just about a minute ago. Yeah, we're at the almost school a administration now. building, um, and 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 you can imagine that they're that they're dotting all the I's and mm -hmm. crossing all the T's and trying to make sure that they have the information exactly where they need it to be before they come before the cameras. Right there, you're going to see a number of state and city. And um, you know, even federal officials come there. We know that Virginia Beach is already being assisted by the FBI, mm -hmm. um, as well as state police. Uh, um, in in this investigation, the chief talked about the intensity of the scene and just how large it is. It's still calling it an active scene, multiple floors. So this gunman was able to roam around for some time and 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 get as many victims, I guess, as he could before police were able to catch him and stop him and shut him down. He knew the area. He knew the building. Well, he right. worked there. If he, you know? yeah, if he worked there, you're right. And, um, yeah, knew who was going to be there. So this shot you're looking at here, this is the uh, Virginia Beach Schools Administration building. So that's uh, in that general vicinity there, awaiting this news conference that was supposed to start at 930. Again, we, we should hear from Police Chief Jim Severa. Mayor Bobby Dyer, he spoke earlier at a news conference, had some trouble speaking, um, uh, which is understandable, um, saying this is the most devastating day in Virginia Beach history. The people involved are our co-workers, colleagues, and friends. Um, and the sheriff coming out with a statement, um, Ken Stolle, mm -hmm. we are heartbroken by today's events. There is nothing we can say that will alleviate the heartache felt by all of us who call Virginia Beach home, especially the families of the victims, but we stand ready to help any way we can. We are praying for those who were injured and are grateful for the heroic acts of the Virginia Beach Police Department officers who brought this event to a swift conclusion, likely saving countless lives. All of the first responders are to be commended for their hard work today. The people we lost were part of our Virginia Beach family and their loss is a tremendous loss for all of us. They will not be forgotten. Very touching statement from Ken Stolle, the sheriff of the Virginia Beach uh, Sheriff's Office. Lots of local love too. Do we, can we show this tweet here? from the uh, city of Newport News, Newport News Police Department. 
Yeah, that's uh, Virginia Beach, our hearts are broken. We send you our love and prayers and our thoughts remain with everyone affected by today's tragedy. Uh, Norfolk also responding, extends our prayers and deepest sympathies to our city of Virginia Beach colleagues and friends. In the city of Hampton, our hearts go out to everyone in Virginia Beach today. Really heartfelt messages from cities, police departments, fire departments, everyone from all over Hampton Roads. And we mentioned this is affecting not just people here, but everyone. Go on Twitter just for oh, yeah. a couple of minutes and you'll you scroll. You'll see just about everybody commenting on this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically what, we, what we're doing. You know, Chuck Schumer tweeted an hour ago, praying for the victims of the shooting in Virginia Beach and their families. That's coming from New York, of course. And, and then you remember um, J.R. Reed from Virginia Beach, basketball player, um, was in the NBA, played for UNC. Our thoughts and prayers are with all those affected by the senseless shooting in today in Virginia Beach. I can't stop thinking about all of my family and friends in my hometown. Love y'all. <laughs> we love you too. That's my that's my Kempsville uh, classmate there. J.R. Reed. Yes, and Tommy Smeagol we're hearing. We have something from him. All right, thoughts and prayers with Virginia Beach. Very sad day for our area. Councilman Rouse, you know, he, he tweeted earlier, you know, we will come together. Well, he said that at the news conference. Uh, Virginia Beach Councilman Aaron mm -hmm. Rouse, uh, you know, this will not define us. We will come together. And it is just, just crazy when we think about, what was it, a month ago? Something in the water? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about a month ago where mm -hmm. all eyes were on Virginia Beach. What's going to happen? How's it going to go? And then... It went well, and all these people came into town, and then people felt like, oh, I wish I could have gone. I want to come back next year. It's just, you know, here we are again, And but this is putting us on, in a different way on the map. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Well, in, in, in just a few moments, we hope to hear and get an update from the chief, 934 right now, but obviously they want to make sure that they have everything together mm -hmm. before uh, they they come before the cameras, like I mentioned. Um, he said earlier, you know, lots of questions right now, more questions than answers at a little bit, you know, this was a more, more than two hours into the event, he said that. So imagine how difficult it is to piece things together and then also be delicate with the information because uh, mm -hmm. you don't want to compromise the investigation and uh, you want to respect the process and that's what you have to do. This is how this works, there, you know, there, there is a process. Um, and, and you were talking about the phone calls that you're getting from people, you know, just wanting to make sure you're okay. Mm -hmm. I mentioned my, my best friend from high school who lost her sister-in-law in the Charleston church shooting. Mm -hmm. well, she just called me because mm. I know if I know Kim, she's worried about me now, you know, and she knows firsthand on what it's like to, to try to begin to heal from something like this. Sure. Yeah, this is... Um I mean, this is just, the, this, this is very, very sad news out of the day. We just, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Another thing that the chief said earlier that we have to remember, you see the law enforcement there, you see the people gathered at the scene, the, the fact that the suspect was immediately confronted, the fact that he is deceased, mm -hmm. people can rest easy tonight. No more harm can be done to the community. Police responded quickly. And uh, they, they are heroes. They, they got there and did what they needed to do and they're they're still there on the scene they will be out there on the scene working long hours you know their their friday started differently also oh. you know in, in in the eyes of their family too um and the one police officer was hit you know they, they said his uh, bulletproof vest mm -hmm. saved him mm -hmm. so it's a lot a lot to deal with i think we a got a tweet from the city of virginia or excuse me chesapeake Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Here, a message mm -hmm. from Chesapeake Mayor Rick West on behalf of the city of Chesapeake. I want to offer my sincere condolences to the victims of today's horrific event in Virginia Beach as well as their families. I know the uh, the president has been briefed. We saw this on Twitter. Okay. Uh, he hasn't released an official statement on Twitter. You expect that to happen pretty soon probably. But uh, we are told the president has been briefed. Okay. What a time. I mean this is a busy time. This is the last day of May. Tomorrow is June 1st. Mm -hmm. This is when, you know, school is beginning to end. If it hasn't ended already, you've got graduations. We have coworkers who are, you know, they've got children graduating from, from college and just so much. I just keep thinking about that. You, you end your week and you think, I'm going to go into the weekend one way, mm -hmm. you know, and, and these folks went to work like, okay, you know, this is what I'm going to do on this Friday and everything's changed. Yeah, and, the, and, and the, it's hard to comprehend just how your life can change in just a blink of an eye. You know, mm -hmm. just, just, mm -hmm. 
a 180 degree turn and that's what these people you know as Allie talked about as the families were walking into the Princess Anne Middle School and trying to process what was going on and the one lady she said just yelling over I can't believe I can't mm. believe this I can't believe this happened mm -hmm. trying to process you know how 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 is it that that lives change so quickly in an instant and so right tragically in an instant mm. we told you about the news conference that we're waiting on uh, we want to make a correction it is at the Virginia Beach General District Courthouse so we've got uh, this information that I was looking at uh, Congresswoman Elaine Luria's statement where she said that's where the conference was going to be but mm -hmm. At, mm -hmm. It's not at the school's admin building. It is at the general district courthouse. And w since we mentioned the schools, um, we want to say again that Virginia Beach schools say they will have counselors on hand Monday morning, you know, and f probably for the time being to help out uh, people who need children, students who need to talk to somebody, teachers, I mean, anybody, right? Like, this because is something. it's going to affect it's going to affect so many people mm -hmm. so many people the teachers i mean you know but, but probably nearby businesses mm -hmm. and places in virginia beach may also want to seek some counseling mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. not just the people at the municipal center but just sort of widespread you know when something like this hits your community it just you know it it, it affects so many people and it has a you know a lingering effect Oh, yeah. We've seen this, you know, months and months and years. So this is going to be one of those things that we're going to be talking about, at least professionally here, for the next few weeks, the next few months. Yes, um, and you have to use the word, I mean, for people in that building, PTSD. Oh, goodness, yes. I mean, it is a very serious thing when you're talking about surviving and there's survivor's guilt. Sure. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of psychological things that come into play here that are just going to be... Um, one of those things, you, you know, you have to monitor and we have to, you know, push through and, and come out on the other end. Uh, better people, you know, better region, mm -hmm. better, better state. Sure. And maybe uh, there will be somebody who says, you know what, mm -hmm. I was spared and yeah. there's a reason why and, yeah. and things are going to change for that person. We do have a uh, message from the mayor of Suffolk. Mm -hmm. uh, our hearts are broken. Our thoughts and prayers are extended to city leaders, employees and citizens of Virginia Beach following this afternoon's tragic events. Mm -hmm. uh, the city of Suffolk stands ready to provide any assistance needed. We pray for God's blessings in this most sorrowful time. That's Mayor Linda Johnson, city of Suffolk. Wow. I have right here, uh, Malcolm Graham. Malcolm, can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, Malcolm lost his sister in the church shooting in Charleston. Oh. He also has a sister who lives in Virginia Beach. And Malcolm, as you can imagine, our community now is going to have to go through this tremendous uh, heartache and healing. And can you talk to us a little bit about what that experience is going to be like? Well, first of all, again, um, I'm thinking about the citizens of Virginia Beach, uh, those who work for the, the government there uh, as a former Charlotte City Council member and, and state Senate uh, senator. I clearly understand the important role they play in, in your community. Um, as a survivor or a victim, my sister Cynthia uh, died at the Emmanuel AME Church. Um, that community, Virginia Beach, is now going to have to pull together as one, um, one heartbeat. Um, it's unthinkable what happened, uh, but um, it, 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 the, the concern should be not about the perpetrator, but about those who lost their lives, those who were injured, and those who were victimized being there at the site of the shooting. So. The first thing is just hug uh, your neighbors and your friends and and give the, the victims and their families the type of support and more importantly, the type of space they're gonna need for the next couple of days. This is a heartbreaking. Um, you have a loved one with you um, uh, today uh, and then 10 minutes later, um, no fault of their own, and they're gone away. And so it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, I can imagine and I know that was a tough experience for you. Um, it's Malcolm Graham, by the way, I don't believe I said I said your last name. Now, I know you did have a sister in Virginia Beach, is that correct? Or Yes, yeah, she's in the, in the tri area, um, Jackie, and uh, she worked for the Department of Motor Vehicles, so I'm um, checking with, in with her to make sure she's okay. And, and and so uh, it, it's just heartbreaking. Um, as you know, in Charlotte, uh, less than a month ago, a shooter went into a classroom at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte and um, That's right. opened shooting and two were, two were killed in that. And so uh, this type of um, 
mass execution, as I call it, uh, uh, in public spaces, um, churches, um, university classrooms, at a municipal building in Virginia Beach, at a church in Charleston, at a synagogue in Pittsburgh. Th these are executions in public spaces, uh, and they're soft targets. Uh, and so, uh, although I know the, the law enforcement officials in Virginia Beach uh, were very prepared for something like this to happen, um, but you you can't have a cop on every corner in every building, uh, and so soft talk is like uh, the church or the synagogue in Pittsburgh or the classroom in Charlotte. Um, uh, it, it's just um, it's just painful. Yeah, it's just extremely painful. Um, we appreciate your advice. I mean, is there something that is like if if uh, a message that you would want to pass on to the families because. You know what that pain is like. Well, it's just to be strong. Um, be strong. Um, there's a quote that says, be strong. We're not here to play dream of drift. We have hard work to do and heavy loads to live. Shun that the struggle for is God's gift. Be strong. And so uh, the community is going to have to um, come together as one okay. and uh, support okay. the victims and the families. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Graham. Uh, we're gonna take a news conference now and, and we're still praying for you. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Governor thank Northam you. there is at okay. the podium. Let's listen right. in. Governor Ralph Northam about to speak there. You see folks assembled at the podium. That's Councilman Aaron Rouse right behind him to his left and Mayor Bobby Dyer with the white hair and the blue tie. It looks like they're getting set up to speak there. We are told we'll hear from the governor, then the mayor, then the police chief. Evening. This is a horrific day for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Our hearts ache over the senseless violence that has been inflicted upon the Virginia Beach community today. My deepest condolences and prayers go to the families of those who left home this morning and will not return tonight. They were all someone's child and many were someone's parent. They were heading into the summer weekend. That they should be taken in this manner is the worst kind of tragedy. Their families are facing painful loss and grief. They each leave a hole in a family, in their neighborhood, in this community, and in our commonwealth. We mourn with their loved ones, but sympathy doesn't fill that hole. We must take care of these families, these horrific tragedies test our souls. Grief doesn't pass quickly. It lasts far beyond these coming days and these families will need support in the months and years to come. I'm also praying for those who were injured in this tragedy and hoping for their full recovery. Along with the pain of their own injuries, they face the loss of their co-workers and their friends. I want to commend the local and state law enforcement officers, the first responders, the medical teams, and all others who acted swiftly to respond to this situation. Their actions likely saved lives, and they have experienced scenes and injuries no one should ever have to face. My thoughts continue to be with the victims and their families. To them and to the city of Virginia Beach, I offer the full support of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Tonight, we are all about Virginia Beach. I'd like, now like to turn the podium over to our mayor of Virginia Beach, Mayor Dyer. Yes. Today is Virginia Beach's darkest hour. A senseless crime happened 
and imposed tremendous grief upon the people of Virginia Beach, the Commonwealth, and this country. When we get through the shock of it all, and we get through the details that we must go through over the next day or two, I believe that our community, Virginia Beach, along with our neighbors in our other cities, in Hampton Roads and our Commonwealth and our country, will be there for not only the families, because that's when they're going to need us going forward. But we're going to show that Virginia Beach is a city of resolve and dedication. And, you know, uh, we are going to be there for all the families, the friends, and our community in a big way. And for that, I thank you, and I would like to turn this over to Chief Severa for an update. As I said earlier this evening, as we are able to gather more information, we will give that information out. So this is the additional information that I have at this time. Again, it will probably change a little, and it may increase as we move forward as we're investigating this case. Right now, we have a team of investigators, detectives from the city of Virginia Beach, being assisted by forensic technicians from the FBI and the state police in processing this most horrific scene. We are in the process of identifying the victims and making notification to their families. I can tell you that we do have an additional victim to report. We now have 12. One victim um, succumbed to the injuries on the way to the hospital. We also have four additional victims being treated at area hospitals. And we have reports that others may have self-transported. So as we get more information on that, we will begin to release it. Our process is always to notify family members prior to releasing names. We do know who the suspect is. We have not been successful in notifying certain family members. Once we are able to do that, we will release his name once. We're going to mention his name once. And then he will be forever referred to as the suspect because our focus now is the dignity and respect to the victims in this case and to their families. I can tell you that when the initial call came out of an active shooter in Building 2, Building Number 2 in our city houses information technology, planning, public works, and public utilities, plus a printing operation. <clears throat> there, it, this building has the potential of having over 400 city workers at one time or other in the building. When the original call came out, immediately four officers responded. Two were seasoned veteran supervisors from the Detective Bureau, and we have two canine handlers who are assigned to our Special Operations Unit. They immediately made entry into the building. Due to the sound of gunfire, they were able to locate the floor in which the suspect was committing his carnage. They immediately engaged with the suspect. And I can tell you that it was a long gun battle between those four officers and that suspect. We've recovered a 45 caliber handgun with multiple extended magazines that were emptied at the time. The suspect was reloading extended magazines in that handgun, firing at victims throughout the building and at our officers. I want you to know that during this gun battle, basically the officers stopped this individual from committing more carnage in that building. When the suspect went down due to, due to his injuries, our officers then immediately rendered first aid as they were removing him from the building to the waiting EMS personnel. And I need to say that a second time, even though he, involved, he was involved in, in a long-term moving gun battle with these officers. When he went down, they did what cops do, and they rendered first aid to this individual. He succumbed to his wounds. 
We have found victims on all three floors of the building, as, one vic as well as one victim who was outside in a vehicle. Right now, as many as 90 people have sought support from the Family Assistance Center. And again, we are in the process. Our, our goal now is to identify everyone in that building as quick as we can so we can make the proper notifications to the families of those victims. <clears throat> Do we have any questions? Chief, you were saying uh, outside, what was the relation to the victim outside? That was... I mean, not the relation, but what did you say? It was a vehicle? I just wanted to clarify. A, a, an, an individual was in his vehicle when the suspect shot him. Chief, there are reports that this was a disgruntled employee. Had he been recently fired, or were there any indications of any workplace trouble? I have no information at this time as to the background of the individual, other than he's a city employee. Again, as we work through all of this, we'll be able to give more information at a later time. And he was current up until the shooting? That's correct. Chief, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. So he started shooting victims outside before entering the building? There was one victim outside. He entered the building. He was armed with a 45 caliber handgun that had a suppressor on it. Can you tell us more about the extended magazine? I'm sorry? Can you tell us more about the magazine? It, they're extended magazines. In other words, they, they have more ammunition than the regular magazine. With apologies, Chief, in terms of the numbers, 12 people were killed, and then the gunman was the 13th person who was killed? Or is that the number? We have 12 victims, victims and a deceased suspect. Thank you, sir. Chief, were any of the victims targeted, or was all of this uh, random? At this time, I, I, I can't uh, comment on that as we work through the investigation. Do we know if all victims were city employees? I cannot give you that because we are in the process of identifying the victims. Yes, Chief. The uh, numbers have changed a little bit. I just want to make sure we're straight. <clears throat> the number of uh, victims who uh, were taken to hospitals, uh, can we just get the sum total of what that number is now? Then? Well, I originally reported we had 11 yes, victims. Sir, 11. We have an additional. Yeah. One victim did not uh, succumb to the wounds on the way to the hospital or at the hospital. And I am told that we have four others at the hospital right now going through surgeries. So my math brings that to nine. Uh, well, your math would, would say that we have 12 deceased. Well, yes, sir. I so I apologize. I just don't want to make an error, but before you said that there were uh, six injured? Injured. I did. And again, that was the information that I had at that time. It's been updated. So, so now it's 10, ten injured. No. 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 Four, I, we have 12 two of the deceased. Six injured succumbed. Right. We have 12 deceased. <coughs> and we have four who are injured. Who are currently um, medicine. Going through, right, yes, going right. through surgeries. Chief, have police, have police had the opportunity to search the shooter's home? And have they found anything that's been of interest, like in, additional weapons? <coughs> we're in the process of continuing our investigation at this time. Were any other weapons found at the scene? There are reports that there was a rifle there as well. And we're at the pro we're in the process of continuing the event. That's the best I'm going to be able to tell you at this moment. Chief, can you elaborate more on the extensive gun battle between the officers and the shooter? Well, I can tell you that um, there was numerous shots fired by the individual. Shots were fired um, from various places down the hallway that the officers uh, at, at one time returned. Uh, Basically, they're, they're, uh, the ammunition that they had. So when we talk about this kind of a situation, and many times when we talk about an officer-involved shooting situation, it may be uh, um, minimal rounds by the suspect and by the police officers. This was well beyond that. This was a long-term, but the best I could describe it, is it was a long-term gun battle for police officers. Can you put into a timeline how long? I can't. I can't give you seconds and minutes because we don't, you know, we don't have a stopwatch when we, we're engaged in this. Do you know the time of the suspect's death? I'm sorry? Do you know what time the suspect died? Shortly after we entered the building and confronted him. So the, the call came out at right after 4 p.m., so it will be somewhere uh, after that. We don't have the exact time right Chief, now. Can you tell us about security around these government buildings? How many police there are normally there, and are, are people allowed to enter these buildings with weapons? Um, the individual in question is an employee. He has access to the building. He came in with a weapon today. So he would not have been checked? Or <clears throat> no, he would not have been. 
if was any officers injured? One officer did sustain uh, a wound during the gun battle. Fortunately, his bulletproof vest basically saved his life. And um, we did, he was uh, seen, he was attended to at the scene, but then uh, we then brought him to the hospital afterwards to make sure that everything is okay with the officer. Uh, Chief, when you say suppressor, uh, uh, is, is that a silencer, is that the same thing? Or? It's a suppressor, it's a sound suppressor. Was the gun recovered legally obtained? Um, we're working through ATF at this time. It's part of our investigation. And at police, has your department recently, I know in the past you have prepared for a scenario like this. I mean, how recently was the last time you prepared for this? We train continuously. We train not only as first responders for police, but we train with fire and we train with our EMS personnel because we know that when you have a major scene like this, you're going to need all first responders uh, in, into that particular area. So we do train extensively, both on what we call tabletop exercises, as well as an all hands-on exercise in a building. So I can tell you that we do train extensively and how many weeks or months prior, I, I can't give you the exact number, but our officers and our EMS personnel and our fire personnel are highly qualified unfortunately, in a situation of an active shooter case. So, Chief, there were, of the four officers who entered, two were detectives and two were members of the K-9? Of K-9, that's correct. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, just one final thing, uh, and I've said it before, and, and you heard the governor and the mayor speak of it. Um, we have numerous victims, and we have numerous families. Let's make sure that we keep their dignity and their respect as the number one piece of news that we're going to give out. And I know that our, that our local media um, always abides by because their lives are changed forever. The folks who work in that building, their lives are changed. I have a number of officers right now who are processing through what best could be described as a war zone. Their lives are going to be changed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question of Commander Hanson? Are any, because of this involved city employees, are any city services going to be affected by all of this? I mean, obviously, every one of your employees has to be grieving. Just, I know some work's got to go on, but how's that being handled? We're working through that. Right. We'll have more information for you tomorrow. We will be back here tomorrow for a morning briefing. Time? Time? 9.30. Okay. If it changes, we'll let you know. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, there we go with this uh, news conference here. You see uh, Representative Elaine Luria. She told us she would be there in her statement. You see Congressman Bobby Scott. Mm -hmm. Some handshaking, some hugging. Um, emotional, though, and, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. um, I think the chief did a very good job laying out exactly what happened and, mm -hmm. and certainly calling for people to think about the families, think about being, um, you know, dignified mm -hmm. when dealing with these families. But a lot of detail here that he provided about how this went down, and it's amazing the one thing sticking out about how this was a long-term gun, gun battle, battle that the officers had with the suspect um, and wanting to, to really drive home the point that even once the suspect went down, they rendered first aid mm -hmm. to the suspect. Mm -hmm. um, and then finding out that there is an additional fatality here with 12 people, 12 victims now dead, um, the 13th being the suspect. Yes, and four people are injured and uh, being treated at hospitals. Um, and as he said when he started his part of the news conference, this information, it can change. And, and it did change from just a few hours ago. And that's, that's part of the process that we talk about when some folks want every little detail. Well, they, they can't do that. That's, you have to respect the process and mm -hmm, allow it to mm -hmm. uh, unfold. And you don't want to uh, to mess up the investigation. And I think that's what he's trying to tell us too. You know, a lot of lives have changed here. Those who are, you know, related to the to the victims, you know, love the victims, they're their loved ones, but also the police officers, EMS, you know, emergency crews who are working hard to, uh, and, and they responded to the scene. 
We're going to learn the suspect's name, but the police chief, he's only going to say it once, he said. Mm -hmm. He's only going to say it once because this is a situation that is about the victims, about the people who have been hurt, and he doesn't want to give that sort of publicity to someone who would do something this tragic. So we'll learn who it is. They're, they're not ready to give that information now. It is an employee, someone who had access to the building, mm -hmm. but they're still, still trying to identify victims in that building, in building two right now. And they talked about the people who have, uh, have um, they're seeking assistance, that family assistance center we told you about. They've seen about 90 people seek mm -hmm. support, they say. And, uh, you know, hopefully they will get the answers that they need as the night goes on, because uh, it it's quite a process for them with this investigation. Powerful message, though saying that, you know, Chief Cerver, uh, Severa is saying that, that he's only going to say it once. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times these situations happen and we tend to focus on the on suspect the shooter, and we yeah. say that name, it gets circulated a lot. And I'm not saying this is the case, but a lot of times that's what they want. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, in the coming weeks, focusing on those victims and the dignity and that's something we're going to have to focus on. That's right. I think um, Virginia Tech, that's what comes to mind. You mm -hmm. know, people stop saying that gunman's name. And yeah. It's like, you know, here, here are the students who were there for school, you know, and this kind of happened. And I'm sure that's once we find out who the victims are, we'll, we'll learn their stories. But yeah, the, the focus should be on, mm. on them. Had a 45 caliber handgun with a sound suppressor. Very um, specific yeah. about the details of the, the actual shooting itself. And that's a silencer, mm -hmm. so people can't hear when, you know, so this guy's spraying this building, and, you know, who knows who could hear what was going on. And An that makes it magazine. even more scary. Yeah, that reloading. means more, more ammo, and he's he's reloading. I mean, that's just, just powerful that, you know, he works there, so nobody would probably expect him to come in with a weapon, so he works there. He didn't have to go through anything. Nobody checked him, he, and he had this weapon. Mm. Um, and, and then had victims on all three floors. Well, and then somebody outside, right? They in somebody the car. getting shot in the mm -hmm. car outside. 400 people in that building at any time of the day, they said. So yeah. when you think about it and the police response and those four, I mean, we're going to be calling these guys heroes. Sure. They, they are. They first responded to it. They are. When you think about much. that many people in the building. And it really know. runs the gamut of what they do. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to see that in my notes. I, I remember them. Here we go. Information technology, IT. That's Those are the computer people. You know, things go wrong. We call our IT people, right? Mm -hmm. They're in that building planning, public utilities. There's even a printing Housing. operation, mm -hmm. right? So 400 people uh, could any, be in that building at any time. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of folks. And you think about a gun battle that was uh, engaged in that building with all those people. It could be that many hundreds of people. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, just, just a, a traumatic, traumatic situation. Um, Two things I think we're, we're trying to confirm still, and, and uh, Chief couldn't do, you know, confirm at this time. Were these people targeted specifically? Mm -hmm. We don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. Were they all city employees? We also do not know that yet. Certainly, mm -hmm. things are going to be coming out. Uh, he did earlier say he that they thought he shot indiscriminately, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be a lot more a lot a lot of uh, questions that people still have um, and we'll we're, we're going to be on this story for some time and uh, collecting as much information as we possibly can and bringing it to you as soon as we get it. Now, I'm told we need to check weather. Right. This has been mm -hmm. um, quite a day for for weather, quite a week. I mean, we had the storms last night when we were on the air late at night and then we had some something roll through uh, today. So Evan's monitoring something right now. What's the update with that, Evan? That's right. We still have the severe thunderstorm watch that is in effect until 11 o'clock tonight. The severe thunderstorm warning that was out for Western Hampton Roads that included Southampton County, that was allowed to expire at the top of the hour. But again, we still have some strong thunderstorms that are moving through the area. That watch box again includes South Side and Northeastern North Carolina. And we still have some very heavy rain that is pushing through the area, especially Western Hampton Roads and Northeastern North Carolina right now. And quite a bit of lightning with these storms. That's that's something that we've been seeing quite a bit as well. We take a look at some of the lightning strikes, the numbers that we've seen here. 812 as we've been watching our Skyview cameras. You really see the lightning flashing on there. And we continue to watch again some of that heavy rain that is back across western Hampton Roads right now moving through Southampton County, Sussex County and into Surrey County. This is where we had that severe thunderstorm warning a little bit earlier. The storms are now weakening below severe weather criteria, but 
Again, we, we have seen, again, some gusty winds checking for any kind of hail. Not seeing that with these storms, but we are seeing that very heavy rain through Sussex County right now from Homeville down towards Littleton, Lumberton, Hilda and Gray, Western Southampton County around Adams Grove, Druryville, Capron as you work your way along 58. As we head off towards the north into Surrey County, some very heavy rain right now for you around Carsley and Savage, Spring Grove over towards Elberon and Dendron is getting ready to push into Surrey and this whole line is sliding eastward. So it's now moving into areas of the peninsula as well, just up into areas north of James City County. So we're talking New Kent County and Charles City County. But again, this is sliding eastward. Here's the loop over that past three hours and you can just see there how we had a lot more red even just an hour or so ago. I'll back it up a little bit as the storms were crossing Interstate 95 had a lot more red than what we're seeing with them now at the same time. We're seeing these storms. I'll rock it kind of back and forth there so you can see how they're moving to the northeast as well. So we are seeing rain out along the ocean front, some moderate rain across areas of Chesapeake and once again, some very heavy rain through northeastern North Carolina from Elizabeth City towards Bartlett, Goose Creek over towards Poplar Branch and Corral. And if you were watching earlier, we were talking about some of the severe thunderstorms that moved through parts of Hertford County a little bit earlier. Here are some of the storm reports. We had several reports of very, very large hail in Hertford County around Murfreesboro, two and three quarter inch hail. So that's baseball size hail. So this is big, big enough, you know, that you can hold it in your hand like a baseball. Numerous reports of cars with windows broken, homes with windows broken. Of course, that'll also do a number on the trees and the foliage. So several reports there, some large hail. Even back through areas of Franklin, we had some large hail reported a little bit earlier. One and three quarter inch there, hail covering the ground. That was around 730 inch and a half ping pong ball size hail along Route 58 outside of Franklin. There's another one and three quarter inch hail reported in Hunterdale. That was around 725. So these storms will continue to work their way off towards the east right now. None of them are severe, but a lot of lightning with these storms. As we time things out here with future cast, let's go ahead and jump into that. You can see 10 o'clock looking at the showers and thunderstorms around lifting to the north and east. I think certainly by midnight or so most of the heavier rain and the strong thunderstorms will be out of here. Certainly by 6 a.m. a few lingering showers when switching around towards the north and as we go through the day on Saturday just a chance for a couple of showers as we go through the afternoon but temperatures again will be quite a bit cooler afternoon readings generally in the lower 80s. So again we'll continue to watch these storms as they work their way off towards the east. I'm seeing a few other uh, storm reports that are just coming in. Let's take a look at those real quick and show you those. We've got some reports of some trees down in parts of Gates County as well. There's that latest report that just came in from the Weather Service. Huh. Trees down along NC 37 at around 705 in Gatesville and also back through Northampton County around Rich Square. So again, we'll continue to watch these storms. We still have the watch in effect until 11 o'clock. No warnings at this point, but we'll continue to monitor the situation. And of course, we will see you on 13 News Now at 11, Evan. Thank you. We want to uh, go to a tweet from Attorney General Mark Herring. He says, absolutely awful, frightening, and heartbreaking news out of Virginia Beach. My team and I will continue to closely monitor developments and will provide any support we can. Prayers of strength for those injured and affected. And as we said, uh, Virginia Beach is trending um, tonight. No surprise because of this uh, because of the shooting today mm -hmm. at the municipal complex. Um, we have an update now from Dale Godding with Centera. Yeah, he's saying that three patients are at Centera Virginia Beach General Hospital. Two are in critical and one is in fair condition. So Centera Virginia Beach General first received five patients this afternoon, but two have died. One patient at Centera Norfolk General Hospital is in critical condition. That's the person we probably saw taken by Nightingale right there at that moment. And that patient first went to Centera Princess Anne, but was later picked up by Nightingale and flown to uh, Norfolk, the Regional One Trauma Center. And one other patient who self presented at Centera Princess Anne was released from the emergency room. And so they're not going to provide any more additional information on genders and ages at this time and asking people to respect the privacy of the patient. So touch and go very serious situation at the hospitals right now where we have two people three in critical condition oh. mm. and we know now from this uh news conference that just wrapped up we now have 12 victims dead uh, uh 
First it was 11, but another victim has died since the last news conference. And the, the shooter is dead. And then we have uh, the people that we just mentioned being treated at the hospitals. Um, Governor Ralph Northern started this news conference by saying this is a horrific day for the Commonwealth of Virginia. He talked about, you know, the victims and the people who were there, that they were all someone's child and many someone's parent heading into a summer weekend. And I think that really sums it up, right? It's Friday. It's the last day of May. Mm -hmm. And this is a busy time for folks with graduations, weddings, prom, you know, all kinds of activities, uh, baseball games, you know. Mm -hmm. Just you, you go into your weekend thinking this is what I have planned to do and you don't expect something like this to happen. And now we have families who are our neighbors here mm -hmm. who are dealing with this tragedy tonight. And Mayor Dyer saying this is Virginia Beach's darkest hour. You know, earlier today he said it was the worst day in the city's history and a lot of people agreeing with that. But mentions that the city is a city of resolve and dedication. And uh, we're already seeing signs of that tonight as we watch people um, in the city sort of rally together. Uh, there will be a vigil tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. It's gonna be at the Straw Bridge Marketplace, 10 o'clock in the morning. All are welcome at Regal, Regal, Regal Cinemas at the Strawbridge Marketplace tomorrow. There's the information right there on the screen. It's hosted by Lifehouse Virginia Beach. Yes, and we also uh, learned that Virginia Beach City Schools are gonna provide counselors on Monday and you know, ready to talk throughout the week for anybody who needs that support there because of what happened today. Um, the chief was, was adamant about not naming this uh, this suspect. Like, you know, once they do release his name, he says it's going to be that one time, and then we will know him as the suspect. And he says, you know, he was a city employee. He worked for Public Works, but that that's it, because we need to focus on on the victims. Yeah, and about 90 families at Prince's Anne Middle School, 90 people. Um, families, that's where they were told to go today to get more information. They're still there waiting. They're still trying to ID victims. Um, I, you know, I just, my heart just aches for what that situation must be like mm -hmm. at that middle school right now. Our Allie Weatherton has been there a good part of the afternoon reporting on just some of the emotional scenes that she has witnessed. So we know now that 90 people have um, arrived there and um, are probably trying to support each other at the same time, just trying to figure out what in the world has happened. And this is such a delicate situation for those involved. And that's why the police chief reiterated, he said it earlier, he said it again, we have numerous victims and families. Let's keep their dignity and respect intact. And also mentioned the, the family members of the first responders, the police officers, those who are investigating this, just working hard. And we heard from the Red Cross, they're out there, you know, handing out water you know, offering a listening ear. Um, Mental health counseling. Yes, thank goodness for the support of other people, mm -hmm. the love of other people. Yes. We're, our area, we're gonna need this for a while. We're definitely gonna need this for a while. Yeah, and other cities pledging their support. We've heard from Chesapeake, Newport News, Suffolk, Norfolk, um, everyone in Hampton Roads and beginning to hear from um, other cities and states uh, across the country mm -hmm. um, offering their support as well. Lots of thoughts and prayers and 